Hello, everybody. Welcome to the world's greatest podcast. This is Slam, the podcast that reviews every single superhero thing ever created by DC. I'm your co-host, Mike Allen, as always, I'm joined by... Joshua Mervell, and today we're going to be taking a look at two of the origins for the character Mr. Terrific. That's right, Mr. Terrific. Um, when I was growing up in the 80s, he was a very obscure Golden Age character that everyone forgot about, no one did anything with, and he was kind of, to be honest, a joke, mostly mm-hmm. because of that shirt that said Fair Play. Yeah, it, it might be one of the worst uh, comic book costumes it's awful. I'm not going to argue with that. Um, <laughs> did you know anything about Mr. Terrific before we... Not this, this version. Okay. Uh, I, I knew that the character existed, but other than that, I don't think I've read anything with this character before. Okay. Um, but the the new Mr. Terrific um, with like the black T painted or mask or whatever over his face i do know that character from different comics and whatnot but uh i don't know much about uh, uh this guy oh this terry, terry sloan? sloan no oh boy yeah okay, so we're gonna find out uh, um well, what first... were they thinking with the costume <laughs> like well what? i mean for, we've got the <laughs> those classic robin colors that look ugly no matter how you you know right. put them together but green and red don't go together unless it's freddy krueger or santa claus right? right that's my rule he's got yellow things around his boots but then he has like the boots themselves are brown yeah they kind of look like he's just got like big fluffy yellow socks right um a green trench coat with like a l- giant leather belt over top of it and he has like a custom printed sign <laughs> on his chest or yes. on his like stomach. Uh, it's so strange. And then, yeah, his just like, he just has a plain kind of red cowl. Uh, and we should also point out that in this particular drawing here in Who's Who by uh, Stephen De- De Stefano, I like how he has like a... Would it, would it, I'm not sure what that's called, the part that comes out below the belt there. It's like a tunic or whatever it is. Yeah. But I love how you can still see the definition of his ribs, you know, like a classic right? Studio, right? Like, it's just funny. Yeah. But whatever. Like, it's, a, it's, like it's a spandex trench coat. Right, right, right. <laughs> but yeah, I like this art. Um, I think he did uh, Amazing Man. Not Amazing Man. Amazing, Amazing Man. Man? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that was him. But anyway... So, like Wonder Woman and Wildcat, Mr. Terrific first appeared in Sensation Comics. Oh, no. I was going to say Sensation Comics number one, which is the comic, but Wonder Woman first appeared in All-Star number eight, then appeared in Sensation number one. Okay. Okay. That was wrong about that. However, it's a significant comic. So, uh, I am going to summarize the next one. So, Josh, you're going to tell everybody briefly what happened. Right. opening story for mr terrific yeah so we get this little moment where we're kind of introduced to the character everybody knows who mr terrific is right well this is his origin um it's also i also noted too he his costume does look a little bit different here now like he's got like almost like (sighs) boxing shoes maybe like ballerina shoes yeah weirdly laced up all the way from like the toe and And he's got full yellow gloves wait did he have yellow gloves no he didn't have any gloves at all he's got like big yellow like doctor strange kind of gloves on uh and then everything else is pretty much the same right i didn't Um, notice that yeah but yeah we we uh we learned that um as a boy terry was extremely smart um he (sighs) graduated school early and he's like in college as a little kid and the military is trying to come up with some blueprints for a new uh sea vessel i think or like a plane or something so they actually go to terry to get these plans because he knows everything i guess um and so this guy this this you know captain goes and visits him at his home he shows him the plans he's like you're so great at everything thank you so much for helping us out little boy he uh, shakes his hand and leaves and 
some goons are kind of waiting for the the captain to steal the plans uh and they sneak up behind him and they punch him terry's watching this from the window and he pops out and of course because he knows how to do everything and anything and he can do everything and anything he easily uh, uh knocks these bad guys out and uh they're quickly arrested and uh we kind of now like flash through terry's life he's the best at sports he can beat anybody at chess he graduates super early he gets an amazing job um he's uh, immediately promoted to like be in charge of this uh factory uh and he's just very unfulfilled with his life because he's just always good at everything that nothing really has meaning anymore so one day while he's driving he decides that he is going to take his own life and he uh is driving his car over a bridge and while thinking this he sees somebody else this woman on the edge of the bridge that is going to take her own life so he slams on the brakes and tells her to stop and not to jump she does anyways and he dives down and of course he's able to save her and uh she he kind of asks her why she's like so depressed and why she would want to do that she explains that her uh younger brother has gotten in with the wrong crowd and eventually he's kind of been tied up with the mafia and there's this big crime boss oh what's his name it's like mr big time i think uh and uh uh she doesn't have any control over him she tried to confront him but he's like if you rat me out to the police uh, i've set it up so your little brother is the fall guy so he's gonna be the one that gets arrested so she's so sad about this that she's going to take her own life and that gives mm -hmm. uh terry the idea to don a costume and go and help these uh these kids so um he goes there and he uh He's talking to the little kids and he's like, hey, um, why don't you bring me to your boss? And they're like, OK. So he goes over there and he knocks out all the, the bad guys. This mob boss, like six, all, six, all of them on him. And he, he easily uh, uh, knocks them all out. So then the uh, 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 big bad guy, he this mob boss, he's like trying to handle Mr. Terrific. And uh, he's throwing daggers at him and he easily dodges them. And all of the kids are kind of like, hey, this guy's not very strong. Oh, well, maybe he's maybe he's got smarts. Yeah, that's why he's the boss. Mm -hmm. So Terry makes him do simple math and he can't do this. it. <laughs> he can't do it. So uh, they put a dunce cap on him and force him to leave town forever. And uh, uh, Terry tells the boys to go to a new address the next day. Uh, and he uh, has opened up a sort of club, the Fair Play Club, where he's able to kind of re rehabilitate, I guess, like kids that are kind of going down a wrong path to kind of, you know, bring them back into society normally. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we get kind of get a little bit of a recap where um, this woman goes back to visit uh, Terry and thanks him and then we're kind of like yep that's that's the story of mr terrific and comic ends yeah so here's the thing mm -hmm. um i actually kind of like this um the, it's a simple idea the fact that this guy is good at everything he's right. smart he's strong he's the best and he's so good at everything that he's bored and so he needs to find purpose and the purpose ends up being helping other people which is a cool idea for like you know a kids comic in the 40s or whatever i think that's a cool idea yeah it's, yeah I, as we talked about his costume is terrible um i mean this gang is so funny this uh purple dagger gang and how it's the r is like the e is backwards right yeah whatever it's it's of the time but i think for what it is uh, it's pretty enjoyable what did you think of it it was fun um it helped that it was just a couple pages long um the story was pretty simple not too complex and convoluted i think that really helps with a story like this that is very light and not like plot heavy um the characters and the bad guys being a little goofy definitely 
plays into this type of story and what they're trying to tell. So I, I did enjoy it. It's not the best comic I've ever read, obviously, mm-hmm. but right. you know, it, I, I had some fun. Uh, I had some fun with it. And yeah, a particular, particularly making this mob boss do math. And then he's so bad at it that they make him wear a dunce cap and, you know, run him out of town is very funny. Um, yes. I, I almost wish that there was a little bit more to that. Like we saw it maybe a little bit, uh, you know, and just kind of play it up. But it's yeah, mm-hmm. it, it was a fine, fine comic. I don't think that this character um, is very interesting where I would like go out of my way to read more of this guy. Right. But this story was fun. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah, and I, I like the fact that he uses their old gang headquarters as uh, like a new clubhouse for kids. You know, I think that's a cool idea. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, uh, obviously, yeah, this is of its time. It was a very different time back then, but I think it's a cool idea. I like it. Uh, his name is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> I think there's a reason why he was never revived for 50 years or right. whatever it was, right? Um, yeah, I thought this was pretty fun. I just want to point out it was written by – where is it here? Uh, Charles Reisenstein, and hmm. and the art was by Everett E. Hibbard, who have never heard of either of these two. So, Yeah. Um, and I, I just have to, before we move forward, tell you quickly that this character, Mr. Terrific, he appeared uh, – I can't give an exact number, but um, – I have a list of his appearances here. He's appeared 165 times, but in the golden age, let's see, he appeared in, um, what is this, Sensation, all the way up to number 63. So that's about five years. That's a pretty okay. good run. Yeah, yeah, not bad, not bad. Um, but- I don't remember him in any of the Justice Society stories that we've read. Oh, you know what? No, I'm pretty sure he was there. Was I'm he? Sure. Yeah, I'm okay. pretty sure. If you look at the yeah, because his costume is pretty hard to miss. But yeah, I'm pretty maybe. Sure he was in there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I I I again, this is just one story, so I'm curious mm-hmm. how this character um plays out from story to story. I think it would be right. really interesting this character and this idea if we like visually saw him almost being an expert at things like um like he sees somebody playing chess and he just kind of like looks like hmm oh i think i could play this game and then easily beats them or you know like things like that where we can kind of see him discovering that he's very good at it and i mean discovering but then we could use things that he learns in each issue to defeat the bad guys at the end Okay. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, I don't know, like, like even something with like the, the throwing knife or something, like maybe he learns something about dodging out of the way or even like throwing sure. knives back where he's able to like yeah. pick it up and then pin, pin the guy's shirt to the wall or something like kind of see um, his like powers really work. Sure. That could be kind of interesting and then see how uh, different things that he does play into the story and how he's able to the best bad guys and stuff like that. I think this concept could be really interesting um, uh, as a superhero. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that, you know, we agree, like we can accept that these old superhero comics are for kids, mm-hmm. but there's still always a way to do them good and do them better. Probably uh, this isn't bad, but yeah, there's probably like, and we've only read one out of 63 yeah, stories. Right. But, yeah. But who knows where it goes after that. But speaking of the right way to do a superhero comic and the wrong way, now we're going to talk about the second Mr. Terrific. And I have a lot to say about this version. Now, the first thing, okay, so the image you've got up there is by Alex Ross. Obviously, the most notable thing about this character is the big T on his face. Okay, so did you ever read um, or did you ever see – Arrow, or sorry, was it Arrow? Yeah, because this character did appear in Arrow, which you haven't watched. No, it. I haven't watched it. Okay, yeah. so this guy's in 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 Arrow, and okay. um, as far as I know, his costume is pretty accurate. Okay, but there was something about that T where, the first time I saw it, I thought, oh well, there must be some 
reason for that T on his face, and there must be some either analogy or metaphor or design thing I'm not aware of. No, it's just someone it's just, just put tea, it there. Because it's, it's cool. a big T on his face. Right. And like the one thing I don't get, I'm pretty sure in the Flash TV mm. show or Arrow, it's like makeup. But I don't know if it's is it supposed to be makeup, it's supposed to be fabric. I have no idea. Uh, he's hmm. still got the big jacket with fair play. I know that later on his big thing is like, cause like the new 52 version was a slightly different origin. I honestly, I don't know anything about him. I don't know anything about him, but hmm. that's okay because we're going to find out his origin. Yeah. I actually don't mind the, the look of like the fair. It's a, it's an interesting way to incorporate the fair play sure. into the costume, have it almost like a letterman jacket type of sure. thing where it's, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't mind that. The T is very goofy. I don't know how they could have incorporated that in better. Right, right. Maybe give him like a full helmet or mask or something and have it there. I don't know. But it it, it does feel strange. It feels very strange. I, yeah. I would I would probably just prefer a domino mask. Right, and, and, like, and like I said, it's one of those things where you go, oh, they must know something I don't know about design. or No, they don't. No, it's just a T. It's big, just the big, T. Yeah, big black T. Right. But, okay, so now we're going to talk about the Spectre number 54, which was a, f a fairly critically acclaimed and popular run by uh, John Ostrander, the creator of the, of the modern-day Suicide Squad, as well as Tom Mandrake. Tom Mandrake um, was a pretty popular artist at this time, they they also I think they also did a Martian Manhunter series which was pretty mm. popular, and Tom Mandrake did the Shazam reboot post Crisis. That's where I know him from, and he was just kind of a, around at this time. You know, he's a, he's a fairly good artist. Um, but anyway, so this is an ongoing story called the Haunting of Jim Corrigan, and this this sorry if you go back to the cover, the cover oh, yeah, sure. doesn't really tell you anything about this issue, but it is a fairly good cover. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. What was that? I don't know if I can. It's pretty interesting. Oh, uh, it's John Corbin. John Corbin is a famous um, heavy metal artist. The the uh, the the magazine Heavy Metal. Mm -hmm. So anyway, but uh, yeah, okay. So anyway, uh, interior art, J Tom Mandrake, like we said. Okay, so now, so we open up this issue. It's part three of a story called The Haunting of Jim Corrigan. This is part three, Atonement. We open up with a scene with echoes of the Golden Age origin of um, Mr. Terrific. Uh, this guy is standing on a ledge, and he's looking at a picture of his girlfriend or his wife. And uh, he throws it over the edge, and he's got a tear in his eye. So obviously he's upset, he's sad, possibly suicidal. Then all of a sudden, we see a gang of hooligans behind him. They pull a There's three of them. They pull a gun on him. And they threaten to mug him. Uh, but he's like, well, what if I don't care if I live? He's like, well, we'll take your money anyway. But then all of a sudden uh, appears Jim Corrigan, which is the human identity of the Spectre, right? Mm -hmm. So the Spectre can still appear as Jim Corrigan in this. So the bad guys take some shots at uh, the Spectre, but then Jim Corrigan, or sorry, at Jim Corrigan, but then he turns into the Spectre. He scares the bad guys off. Then he has, so then now we start a conversation between this guy whose name is, what is it again? Um, the second Mr. Terrific. You're right. We should, we should know this, but we were, oh, Michael Holt. Uh, oh, Michael. So anyway, so Michael Holt. So then um, he starts having a conversation and the specter is like, um, he's like, oh, you know, your story, you remind me of another uh, a person I know, an acquaintance. Because basically what Mike Holt says is my wife is dead, car accident. And then the Spectre's like, oh, this reminds me of another guy. So we should point out this is post-crisis continuity. So okay. in, in pre-crisis continuity, the Spectre and Mr. Terrific were on Earth 2. And like, whereas um, the modern day Batman and Superman and Flash and Green Lantern were on Earth 1. But now they've merged together. And so the Spectre is like, has been around for 50 years fighting crime. And Michael Holt is alive in 1996, and he's saying, oh, I remember this guy, this other guy named Mr. Terrific from the 1940s. And he goes on to tell the origin of Mr. Terrific, right? And we see, mm -hmm. like, a flashback of um, Mr. Terrific fighting some bad guys. And then we cut over to flashback 
to Satellite Era Justice uh, League. And uh, basically, and I, I, I'm not sure if this is an, I'm assuming it's a real story, but I'm not positive, but um, I'll have to do some research later on. Oh, no, actually, there is. Um, so this is a reference to Justice League number 172. For, for everyone okay. out there in case they want to double check. So anyway, um, so basically, uh, in this story, it's really weird. Mr. Terrific is there, but he's acting all funny. Um, mm-hmm. All of a sudden, there's a big explosion, and they find out, like, in this explosion, Mr. Terrific is killed. But then they find out what had happened was is that Mr. Terrific was possessed by a character named the Spirit King. Then that spirit bad guy goes on to possess the Jay Garrick Flash. The Jay Garrick Flash takes off, and then Dr. Fate tells Batman and Superman, we'll take care of it. It's a Justice Society matter. So then um, so then uh, this, the Jay Garrick Flash goes on this rampage, and he gets ends up getting tracked down by the Spectre. The Spectre as well as Power Girl, Hawkman, and Dr. Fade, and Green Lantern, they finally track down um, J. Garrick Flash. At this point, the spirit of the Spirit King leaves uh, J. Garrick. And then oh, what happens after that? Uh, he, uh, he the, the Spirit King goes into Power Girl, and she's fighting yes. the Justice Society and weakens Dr. Fate. And by doing so, he's able to merge with Dr. Fate. Right. Right. Uh, and then we see the corpse of um, uh, Terry Sloan come back, right? Right, yeah. So Dr. Fate has like a bunch of the Justice, Justice Society members, and they go, uh, uh, Spectre and... Uh, uh, Flash go to stop him, and yeah, we see a bunch of the them there, and then the reanimated corpse of Mister Terrific. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, of course, I just read this yesterday. So now they're they're fighting uh, Spirit King. They're all they're back and forth, back and forth, and then um, eventually the Spectre ends up defeating him. And uh, right with the with the help of the. Because because the uh, spirit yes. king um, can't be affected by um, by him because he is already dead and the specter is right. is in the land of the living and just deals with people who have killed people. So uh, the ghost mm-hmm. of Mister Terrific shows up to fight the spirit king in the spirit world, mm-hmm. and they're kind of having a simultaneous battle. Uh, with the zombie version and then the spirit king and then they both get pushed into like a black hole a spirit world black hole I guess mm-hmm. and everything's fine at the end and um, we get this yeah. ridiculous little uh, goodbye with Mr. Terrific the ghost of Mr. Terrific saying goodbye to the Justice Society and he vanishes in a big flash and it says fair play Fair play. <laughs> he, yes, he disappears. Yeah. So then we cut back to the present, and the Spectre then explains the purpose of his little fable. Mister Terrific served a purpose, and that purpose isn't filled by Superman or Batman or even or even the Spectre. He worked at the street level. So did Batman. He reached kids who might otherwise have gone bad. So did Batman. He replaced <laughs> gangsta role models with one that stressed fair play. Oh boy, you're stretching it there, Spectre. Okay. Yeah. So then we cut back to the same bad guys from the beginning. And uh, then who shows up but but Michael Holt wearing a pair of sunglasses. He's like, you can you can just call me Mr. Terrific because that's what I am. So then he goes in with no apparent training that we're aware of and just beats the shit out of these five guys. Right. They pull a gun on him. He punches one in the face. And then the younger guys... Um, um, kind of end up playing basketball with him, right? Mm-hmm. So now he's going to be a role model for them. But, uh, okay, this I kind of like how then the story takes a twist because then Spectre wants to actually murder the bad guys from the beginning of the story. And then Michael Holt says, well, no, because that's not like justice. They didn't murder anyone. He's like, well, 
but what about the evil that they will do? Who will answer for that? And then Michael Holt says, I will. I'll put my soul on the line. If there's a chance of turning any of these kids back, then I claim that right. Fair play, man. So then this twist that I liked is ruined because then the Spectre thinks in his head, they needed to see that. Michael Holt. They needed to see their hero strong enough to seemingly, seemingly face down even the Spectre. <laughs> It will build the reputation and burnish a legend. So lie. Okay. Right. So anyway. So then Cause, because the Spectre ends. can't do anything bad or be defeated in his own book, I guess. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. We'll talk about that later. But yeah, so then it ends. And then we get a little epilogue that ties in with the main story that we don't really know anything about. Right. Uh, a little reference to Wesley Dodds. So here's the thing. Um, you want to talk about how to do a story, like a simple story for kids. A simple story to introduce a new superhero. And I think this gets almost everything wrong. And I'm not saying this is badly written or badly drawn. It's just, if the story was submitted to me and I was the editor, I'd say, no, stop. You want to introduce a new version of Mr. Terrific. This is not the way to do it. To have the Spectre come in and give a 20-page a, a flashback to the other Mr. Terrific mm -hmm. and then use that as an explanation for why this guy, you should be also, oh, by the way, you should also be Mr. Terrific. I just don't, I, I think it would be much better for Michael Holt to have come up with this on his own, never mind the other Mr. Terrific, and then maybe Spectre gives him the name. I don't know what, but it just seems like a very um, flimsy explanation or reason or motivation to give Michael Holt. Yeah. And then the fact that he just, supposedly he's this guy with no powers, then he goes and beats the crap out of these Well, he guys. does. I thought that they said that he, I think he says he has the same kind of abilities where he learns things very fast and okay. is extremely smart and stuff like that. But Okay, fine. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's the least of my complaints. That's the least of my complaints. It's more just like, I don't know. I always think about. When I think about comic books, superhero comic books, I always think, okay, how is this going to be reprinted in 20 years so that a new reader can pick it up? Mm. Like, if you were to tell someone, oh, you got to read about the new Mr. Terrific, where do I start? Uh, Spectre number 54, uh, it's part three of a story. It kind of ties in, but it kind of doesn't. You know what I mean? Because even Yeah, it's very guy, strange. And, and he doesn't even really have anything to do with it. Like, exactly exactly it, it would be very interesting if we almost see him as the bad guy at the start of this issue where yeah the Spectre shows be up and he's like i'm gonna punish these guys and he's like no step back and he's fighting off because he wants to like he's already kind of taken on the role of uh mr terrific right so he's kind of yeah. stepping in the way from uh uh from Sp from Spectre kind of stopping these guys and taking care of them himself. And then we can, from there, learn who he is. And then Spectre can say, like, I once knew a man like you, Mr. Terrific. He stood for the same thing, yada, 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 yada. Like, it, yeah, he doesn't feel like his own character. Yes, yeah. right. Now, I do like the fact that he disagrees with the Spectre. That's cool, mm -hmm. right? That shows yeah. some agency. However, the fact that the Spectre basically just set him up and was like, ah, uh, I, I, we got to trick these kids into thinking you're actually more powerful than you are. Like, I, that really irritated me. And, and it's also just so strange that he's, he's like, I'm, I'm going to take my own life. Everything is over. And then this guy shows up. And he's like, no, let me tell you about this guy that died. <laughs> and, it's not the story isn't even about him for the most part. I know, you know, and right. then he's like, you know what? I think I've changed my mind. <laughs> you know, I, I'm no longer depressed. Right. I, I won't I won't kill myself um, and I will be the superhero. And he's like immediately has like morals and beliefs and yeah, like not that this character wouldn't necessarily before, but. It's almost because we've only seen the old uh, uh, Mr. Terrific up until this point. It's almost as if he ha has just taken his beliefs and is now using them himself. Like, it's just it doesn't work. Um, no, no. If, and, you know, and yeah, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Because if we if we if we see him from the start acting like this, I can buy it. But it almost feels like he, there's a moment where he changes and decides to be this. 
So the fact that he now almost overtakes Spectre it doesn't even make any sense. Like, like he he proves Spectre wrong. Like I'm gonna stand up to this guy after he just told you that those should be your beliefs. Right. It's right, just right. yeah. It's it's a little. It doesn't work. It's just too flimsy. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I didn't didn't love this one. No, and you know, even when I was because in the past we've been kind of um like i i've picked uh first appearances but then the first appearance ends up not being the origin or not being mm. the the character in full costume so i actually skimmed through many many michael holt stories and like he doesn't he 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 appears very sporadically for a while like in like three pages three pages mm. three pages so i decided okay you know what i'm just going to go with the first story and see what happens and thankfully this is his origin but obviously the character evolves a lot over the years and then um in your um in your images there if you skip to the next thing yeah so there's the michael holt from the new 52 which I kind of didn't when it came out. I didn't even realize he had a completely different costume, but he does, as you can see. So that's kind of the more the, the techie version that he is now. Mm -hmm. And again, I know nothing about this character at all, so I don't know if he's evolved even further since then. But I got to point out, he was a prominent character in um, Tom King's Strange Adventures, okay, which came which came out like a a year or two ago. That was really good. It really? was a um, okay, yeah. I mean, well, Tom King is yeah. He's one of the best, but it was another 12 issue series. It was kind of a mystery. And uh, this version of Mr. Terrific plays a prominent role. And it kind of just reminds you that a good writer can make any character work. Mm. You know, I don't know if every Mr. Terrific story is nearly as good as this one, but he was, he was, ha he was used perfectly. So I recommend that for, for him, for this character. Mm. But other than that, uh, yeah. What else can happen with this character? I mean, he has appeared in arrow, so that's cool. Um, it, do you think like, in fact, he's going to be in the next Superman movie by James Gunn. Oh, that's right. Yes. yes. And it's the guy who plays, um, he was in X-Men first class. He played oh, Darwin, Darwin, right? Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm looking at this actor, not at all who I would pick, but again, I trust James Gunn, mm -hmm. but not the actor I would pick, but let me just see if I can bring up, um, Mr. Terrific on Arrow. I should have included this. Yeah, let's see if I can pull it up. I, I, I can... Uh... Yeah, if you don't mind uh, dropping it into our um, thing here. This costume is pretty freaking accurate. And it actually oh, looks Oh, wow. Hey. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Are you are you going to drop that image in? Yeah, I can yeah. Uh, open I this. I see. So here. in Arrow, he's got a domino mask over top of some black makeup. It's not the best solution, but he does yeah, look Yeah, like I'll see if I can uh, get it in frame here for the <laughs> the podcast. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, kind of there. Okay, there it is. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but it's no, I, it's there I, I for the thing. The, I still see the comic. Oh, okay, yeah, it, it, it's there on the podcast. The podcast. Okay, people that's can, all that matters. Can see it, yeah. our viewers at home. So yeah, um, pretty comic book accurate. Yeah, but also drawing attention to actually no, it, he looks pretty good. Other than the T, I kind of like his costume. Yeah, the 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 suit is kind of cool, like the jacket. I mean, that's right. kind of what his costume is. Like it mm -hmm. is very street level and real. So. Um, well, you, I think it totally works. And you know, the thing is, is there's been a, an evolution in superhero comics over the past 20 years, probably starting with Brian Hitch's Ultimates, where he started drawing them uh, colorful, but a hmm. little bit more practical. Um, and uh, it's almost like, um, you know how race car drivers, they have these super colorful outfits with all, but, right. but they also have all these weird, like, or like, uh, what are they called? Um, like uh, uh um cyclists like cyclists right like they have these super bright costumes but they have all these weird patterns and it's like yeah like I, a superhero could be colorful but there's no reason they should just have like all green or all orange like like mr terrific's costume is cool and it looks almost like something like um not an athlete but maybe a race car driver would wear or something you know so i don't know i kind of like it yeah 
All right, that's it for Mr. This Terrific. Is a, this is a cool. Uh, <laughs> this is a, I I do like the redesign. It's mu I feel like it's a much better uh, version of the character yeah. than the original. Um, I like that. Um, he's take he's taking his powers almost like Mr. Fantastic, and sure. I, it is kind of I I interesting that they have the same like Mr. Fantastic, Mr. Terrific. It feels very uh, similar, but because he's so smart and he can learn these things so fast, he it would make sense that he would use that ability to create technology that he can use sure. while he's he's uh, a superhero and and right. do all of these dif different things. So the fact that he's kind of like more tech based is kind of fun. I like that. You know, um, yeah. yeah. No, I was gonna say it's funny because I didn't ever realize until just now. Mr. Fantastic, Mr. Terrific. I never know, thought of that. Oh, really? And even though even though DC made a comic book called The Terrifics and he was in the team, I still never put two and two really? together. <laughs> but you're right. It makes perfect sense. Mr. Yeah. Fantastic, Mr. Terrific. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is kind of a nice parallel. I mean, like, they obviously don't have the exact same power set. Like, Mr. Fantastic just happens to be extremely smart, where yes. this is more like a power set. Um, yes. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would definitely be interested in, in reading more of this character, especially right. knowing that um, some of the more modern iterations and stories are really good and have done this character justice. Uh, I'm not very interested in reading the, the original Mr. Terrific. Yeah, I'm there's, with you on there's that. There's not much. There's not much there grabbing me to uh, to continue on. So no. I mean, yeah, like we said, there's a reason he didn't really last right. uh, past the Golden Age. There was a reason he wasn't revived. So just some characters, you just got to rethink them. And mm. that's what they've done with Michael Holt. He's a better version. Um, what was the what was that story you said that came out like a year or two ago with, with him? Oh, it, it was called Strange Adventures. Strange Adventures. Okay, um, I'm going to have yeah. to take a look at that because, yeah, I'm definitely... Uh, I definitely want to learn more about this guy and would like to read yeah. more. So uh, I'll probably add that to my tbr list excellent excellent so i guess that wraps up our discussion of mr terrific yeah. we should say that he did join the justice society and that's why he's being discussed on this podcast i mean we we do say that we're going to review every single dc superhero but we're we're actually only going to cover members of the justice society and um the seven soldiers of victory so unfortunately for everyone out there we will not be covering little boy blue and the blue boys we will not be covering the Black Pirate, and we will not be covering the Gay Ghost. I'm sorry. But those all Damn. did appear in Sensation Comics number one. So anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> however, next week, we are going to be talking about another slightly obscure uh, Justice Society member, and that's Wildcat. Oh, okay. Join us for Wildcat, because it's going to be exciting. a good one. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And also be sure to join us on Tape Crusaders. Right. And every other week. And Josh, you can take it from here. Yeah, you can find all of our stuff over on our website at thecomicbooksyndicate.com. Uh, all of our podcasts are also video formats. So you can check them out over on our YouTube channel. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you guys think about the comics, videos, the movies, things that we're talking about. Uh, and yeah, keep in touch. So uh, until next time, we will see you later. Yeah, see you later. Bye.